Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection. Today we're going to make some custom candies for a firm called Perisphere and Trilon. Sometime back I met Todd from Perisphere and Trilon. He was wearing a pin for the 1939 World's Fair that caught my eye. In 1939, the World's Fair was held in New York City and its centerpiece was two buildings, the Perisphere and the Trilon. Having been made on a steel frame with plasterboard, they were only designed to last one year. The Perisphere had exhibits in it, and the Trilon was an observation deck with the longest escalator at the time in it. Since Todd makes classic toys, he thought this logo would be the perfect logo for him to adapt for his own company. And he had a lot to base it off. It was the most popular thing at the fair, and they made thousands of images of it. So as we stir the food coloring into the candy and boil out the water that's in the food coloring, we can think about how strange this could be. People made hats of the building. People wrote songs of the building. There were postage stamps printed with this building on it that were distributed worldwide. It's the perfect logo for a company that wants to preserve a time of board games and board games that have been forgotten. We appreciate this here at Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection. Mind you, that does not mean we can reproduce it identically in candy, but we can get the spirit of it into the candy. Todd sent us a simplified design he thought we could do. We thought we could do a little bit more, so we went back and forth and finally settled on a final design. We cut the colors apart. We have three colors in this design. Orange, blue, and clear, which will become white. The blue is going to remain transparent. The orange and the white are going to become opaque. This is going to mean that the orange is going to shine through the blue. It's going to make it look a bit more purple, but it is a limitation to candy, and I think the effect is still going to be good. Normally we only do one round of stretching, but since we have two opaque colors, we're going to stretch the white on the table, since it's a smaller quantity, and we're going to stretch the orange on the hook. As we fold the candy, we're going to be trapping air bubbles in each layer. These air bubbles will reflect light back and will make the candy go from its transparent amber to an opaque white. If you're ever in Tallahassee, Florida, you can come to Lofty Pursuits and see us make candy live. If you'd just like to try our candy, you can go to www.pd.net and order some online. Maggie takes the larger lump of candy, the orange, and stretches it on the hook until it becomes opaque as well. The opaque candy is very important in this design because it reflects the light, not just the light from the pulling of it itself, but the light that goes through the transparent candy. This is why the blue is going to look a little bit more purple or brown, but it also means that the design itself is going to get more definition. The challenge with this design is the point of the trilon. The trilon is going to want to get round because that point is going to act like a lever sticking so far up. To solve this problem, we're essentially going to make a circular candy with the trilon and the perisphere in it inside another circular wrap of orange. 
we've wrapped the circle to represent the perisphere in blue, and then we're going to add a little bit more on one side to create the shadow effect as best as we can. When we do the final assembly, we make sure to make all the shadows face the same direction. Now to pat it out with orange to complete the shape. We are constantly folding the candy to make sure that the surface on top that cools off faster than the bottom does not harden. For long projects, we sometimes throw a metal bowl over the candy to keep it warmer even longer. As we attach the inner wrap of orange, we also shape the outer wrap of blue. It's cool to build these designs out of candy. The 1939 World's Fair was so influential. It was four times the size of the Epcot Center. It inspired Disney in many ways to build Epcot as a year-round World's Fair. And you can see its direct influence on Spaceship Earth at Epcot. And now it's time to scale the logs down into rods. And we do this without distorting the image. This is one of the touch tricks of this candy making. The log of candy is still very hot, well over 200 degrees, and we've got to keep it moving or it's going to develop a flat side as it sort of settles. Because of that, when we pull the rods off the log, we have to keep them rolling until they're cool. For Perisphere and Trilon, we cut these up into bite-sized bits, and we're going to package them in little bags about the size of a business card, and they're going to attach it to the back of every business card they give out at the New York Toy Fair, a big trade show they go to every year. If you are interested in having custom candy made for your business, wedding, or other event, please contact us through our website at www.pd.net. We even offer services where we can make videos like this to promote your logo or products. If you like our video, subscribe to us here on YouTube, like us on Facebook, or just go to www.pd.net where you can get our candy, or even some of the toys from Perisphere and Trilon. Thank you for watching.